Hello my dear students, welcome to science class. So we are continuing with chapter number 15, Air Around Us from your science NCRT book. So let's see what we are going to learn today. Today we will be learning about how does oxygen become available to animals and plants living in the soil. Then how does oxygen become available to the animals and plants living in water. How is oxygen in air replaced and what are the uses of air. So, let's proceed. Now, the animals which live in soil and the plant roots which grow in the soil, they need oxygen to breathe. You all know that oxygen, it is present in 21% in our atmosphere and it is very indispensable for the life of the earth. Okay. So, all the animals that live in soil and the plant roots which grow in soil they need oxygen to breathe okay so they get this oxygen from the air present in the spaces between the soil particles okay over here you see soil you all know that soil contains air okay so the plant roots they do get oxygen from the air present in spaces between the soil particles okay and here you see these all are what? These all are the soil organisms. Okay. For these organisms, the soil it acts as the habitat. Okay. So, we can say that air is found in the soil. The air is present in the spaces between the soil particles. Right. The animals which live inside the soil, they get oxygen for breathing from the air present in between the soil particles. Now, sometimes what happens when it rains heavily, here you can see when it rains heavily, then all the spaces occupied by air and in the soil, it gets filled with water. Here you see with continuous rain, it is getting filled with what? Filled with water. Right. So, and uh, whenever it gets filled with water, at that time, no air is left in the soil. So, in such situation, the animals living inside the soil, they have to come out of the soil to obtain air for breathing and respiration. Okay. Now, earthworm. Okay. These all are the earthworm. Okay. Now, the earthworm, they normally live inside the soil. Now, these earthworm, they come out of the soil only during the heavy rains. Okay. Generally, during the rainy season, you will find that more and more what earthworms are present here and there. Actually, what happens? They come out from inside the soil during heavy rains. Why? During heavy rains, all the spaces in soil which contain air get filled by rainwater, leaving no air in the soil for earthworm to breathe in. Okay, so due to this, the earthworm, they have to come out of the soil to obtain air for breathing. Okay, now, many animals live in soil. They dig burrows and holes deep into the soil. Here you can see this is rat and this is what? This is rabbit. Okay, these are the burrowing animals, rodents. Okay, so these burrows and holes also make spaces available for the air to move into the soil so that it can be used to obtain oxygen by the animals living there. Right. Next is we know that roots of land plants they grow in the soil and you all know that soil has air in it. So the roots of plants which grow in the soil they get oxygen for respiration from the air present in the soil particles. Okay here you see. These are the spaces, okay. These are the soil particles, this brown colored one. And these are the air spaces. Air is trapped inside the spaces, okay. And what happens? The root here, okay. It absorbs this, what? It absorbs this air, okay. And the root, it gets air for the process of respiration. So, from this discussion, we conclude that air in soil necessary for animals and plants living in the soil, okay. Now, soil has air in it. How can you prove that? Take some dry soil in a glass or in a beaker. Okay. Then you add some water in the glass and stir the soil and water with a glass rod for a while. Okay. Instantly, what you will find? You will find this air bubbles are coming out from the soil. These bubbles are of the air which was present inside the spaces between the soil particles. Actually, what happens when you are stirring the soil with water, then the water enters the spaces between the soil particles and it expels the air present there. This expelled air is actually seen in the form of the bubbles coming out of the soil. Okay, so this activity, it shows that soil contains air. 
next topic is how does oxygen become available to the animals and plants living in water now the aquatic the animals sorry the animals which live in water are called what are called aquatic animals and the plants which live in water or which grows in water they are called what they are called aquatic plant right now this aquatic animals and plants live in the water of ponds lakes rivers and seas right now the water of ponds lakes rivers and seas it has some what it has some dissolved air in it okay so the animals and plants which live in water they use the air dissolved in water for breathing right so since air contains oxygen so therefore we can also say that animals and plants which live in water they use the oxygen dissolved in water for breathing right now how do living things in water they get oxygen now water you know that it has some dissolved oxygen in it right now the water animals like fish which live in water breathe in oxygen dissolved in water of pond lake river or sea right the plants that live in water they also use the oxygen which is dissolved in water okay so oxygen it is present in water as well now if there were no oxygen in water then no living things could survive in water right now our next topic is how is oxygen in air gets replaced okay so we have studied that a large number of animals and plants are consuming oxygen from air for respiration right now the oxygen of air it is also consumed during the burning of fuels by human beings right now even all the oxygen of air does not get used up now we will explain how the oxygen in the air it is replaced or refilled now the oxygen of air it is consumed by animals you all know for the process of respiration and in the burning of fuel as because oxygen is a strong supporter of combustion okay oxygen since it is a strong supporter of combustion okay and it is replaced by plants through the process of photosynthesis why because plants they produce oxygen okay so it is getting refilled so how does it is happening now in presence of sunlight here you can see in presence of sunlight plants they use carbon dioxide and water to make what to make food okay by the process of photosynthesis and as a by product they produce oxygen gas right now plants they also consume some of the oxygen gas for respiration but they produce much more oxygen than they consume so we say that plant they produce oxygen gas so thus the plant constantly refilling the oxygen gas into the air by the process of photosynthesis the oxygen produced by plant it is used by animals to live so what does this mean this means that animal depend on plants for getting oxygen gas for breathing so you can say animals cannot live without plant right now the next part is the carbon dioxide of the air being consumed by plants in photosynthesis it is constantly put back into the air by the process of respiration of animals because we are exhaling out carbon dioxide as well as by burning of fuel right when you are burning fuel smoke is getting emitted and you all know that smoke it contains a remarkable amount of carbon dioxide okay so the animals and plants they use oxygen from air for respiration and they give out carbon dioxide gas right now this carbon dioxide gas it goes back into the air similarly burning of fuels okay by human beings they uses oxygen from air and produces carbon dioxide gas now this carbon dioxide gas also goes back into the air so thus animals they constantly put back carbon dioxide into air by the process of respiration and burning of fuels so this carbon dioxide is then used by plants for making food by photosynthesis so what does this mean this means that plants depend on animals for getting carbon dioxide gas for photosynthesis okay so from this discussion we can conclude that respiration by animals and plants and burning of fuels by human beings they uses oxygen from air and put carbon dioxide into the air on the other hand photosynthesis by plants they uses carbon dioxide from air and put back oxygen into air so in this way plants and animals help in maintaining the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide gases in air 
Next comes a very, very important thing that is what are the uses of air in our daily life. Okay. So, air is used to, uh, useful for human beings in various ways. Number one, air is used by human beings for the process of breathing and respiration. Right? No human being can survive without the oxygen of air. Okay. Because in presence of oxygen only inside our body, the food is get, um, getting burned and the energy is being liberated and that energy it is utilized for the uh, for our body to do all kind of work next air is used for burning fuels like uh, wood uh, coal kerosene to make fire right now this fire it is used by man for cooking food and other heating purposes okay no fuel can burn without the oxygen of air so air is necessary for burning fuels Next comes compressed air is used to fill the tires of various kind of vehicles such as bicycles, scooters, cars, buses, trucks and aeroplanes. Okay. The air filled tires, it makes the transport smooth and easier. Right. The air is also used for what is used for inflating balloons and footballs. Right. Next comes uh, blowing air. You know that it is called wind. It is used to what it is used to turn the blade of windmill okay now these windmills they are then used to draw the water by running pumps okay then to run the floor mills and to generate electricity okay the windmill it is also used to run a pump to draw water from the ground okay Next, air, it uh, helps in the movement of birds and insects for the process of flying. Okay. So, in fact, the birds, bats and insects, they can fly only due to the presence of air. The birds, bats and insects fly by pushing the air downwards and backwards with their wings. Okay. And that air, it helps them to move forward as you have already read in the chapter, uh, body movements. Right. Next, the most important thing is that Air plays an important role in the water cycle in nature. This is because what this is because hot air being lighter, it rises up, it carries the water vapor high up in the sky and it helps in bringing rain. Now over here, evaporation, transpiration, condensation, precipitation, all these processes are involved. Okay, moving air also carries rain clouds from one place to another and it helps in bringing rain at all places okay so these are all about the uses of air so that's all for today thank you everyone